Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a slideshow video using Adobe Photoshop. And uh, let's just get let's get right into it. First thing we got to do is let's go to Window, Workspace, and change this to Motion. If we're going to be editing photos like their video, we need to be in Photoshop's video editing mode. And this is where we find it right here, clicking on Motion. You'll see not much will change except for this big timeline will pop up here along the bottom. This is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work here in the timeline and over in our layers palette. Keep an eye on this. If this sometimes will pop out, if you're not being uh, being careful, if that happens, all you got to do is just click and drag this back down to the bottom until you see that little blue bar appear there and then let go and that timeline will snap right into place. Let's just set up a couple themes here to get ready. Let's make this a little bit taller. I'm going to put my cursor right about there and drag that up. I want to make my timeline just a little bit bigger. I also want to make my layers palette just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to put my cursor right there and drag that up. We're not going to use any of these other palettes, so let's make those a little smaller and make the ones we are going to be using a lot bigger. Okay, now we're ready to add our photos into our video. Let's make this real easy though. Let's go to our photos in Bridge. Here I am in Bridge, my period one, Johnson, Mr. Light Painting. And here we have all of the photos that were taken for this assignment. I've gone ahead and marked the ones that are going to be used. I gave them four stars just because I wanted to do things a little bit differently. You can see right here, if I click on this, it will only show my four star photos. And that's what I want right there. And what I need to do is get these into their own folder. A lot of different ways to do that. Let's start by making a new folder. I'm going to turn off the four star filter. And let's go to File, New Folder. I'm going to call this Photos for Slideshow. Now, if you don't want to go through and give them all four stars, maybe you just know, hey, I do want this one in my slideshow. I know that. That's okay. Just click on it and drag it up here right on top of there, and that will drop it into the folder for you. That's perfect. So I could go through and find all the ones that have four stars and drop them in. Or I could give this folder four stars and then turn on my four-star filter and then just select all of these. Click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last one, and drag them into there. Now the reason we want these in their own folder and not just jumbled in with all the other ones is because when we go into Photoshop and click on this Add Media button right here, this is how we're going to add our photos to our timeline. We're not going to do the old traditional file open. We're not going to use that because we're working with video now and video is a little bit different. So we're going to click on this and choose Add Media. And let me go into my Period 1 folder, find my folder. And here's my light painting folder. And look, here's my photos for slideshow. If I didn't have these in their own folder, I'd have to go through and find them in here. And that's annoying. So let's just double click on this. Let's select all of these by clicking and dragging over them or pressing Control A. Either way would work. And go ahead and press Open. I'm going to pause the video while these load up. OK, all my photos have loaded up. Let's take a look at what we are seeing here. Let's look here in our timeline. This is where all of our photos show up in order, in the order they were loaded up. And this right here is called our playhead. And this is basically, uh, if we were to press play on our key on our player here, which I'm not going to do because that sometimes will cause my screen recording software to crash on this little laptop. But this would basically move across and show us, and you can see as it moves from photo to photo, uh, it changes up here in the preview window. And this is, uh, like again, like I said, this is called the playhead. And there's a couple things you need to know that if I want to work on a photo, let's say I want to make some changes to this photo right here. Two things have to happen. One, I have to click on it here in the timeline. And two, the playhead has to be over it. If I have this photo clicked on, but the playhead is over here, it doesn't matter what I try to do, it won't work. You have to have the photo selected and have the playhead over it. You'll notice over here that all of my photos loaded up in the Layers palette, but they're all in a folder called Video Group 1. Uh, this is how Photoshop manages things that are going to be in videos. It puts them in a Video Group folder, and anything that's any photos that are in the same folder are going to be next to each other on the timeline. That will make more sense later on, but for now, just know that photos uh, that are on the timeline will also be in a Video Group folder. First thing we need to do is we need to get these photos into the order in which we want our story to be told. There's a couple different ways we could do that. We could just click and drag it. For example, here is my very first photo. And uh, I could just click and drag this all the way over here and put it in first position. And there you go. Now that is my first photo in my slideshow. Perfect. 
You'll notice when I did that, it moved over here in the layers palette from about right here down to here. That means that the bottom layer in the layers palette is going to be the first slide, the second from the bottom will be the second slide, and so on and so forth. The very top layer being the last slide. That also means that if we wanted to reorder using the layers palette, we could. We could just click and drag on things and move them from here to here and move them around. Do be careful though because sometimes people will click and drag and they'll drag it right out of the video group and watch what happens when I let go of this. Notice it's no longer indented which means it's no longer part of the video group and look what happened over on my timeline. This video is no longer in the row with all the other ones. It's now on its own video group layer. I don't want that. Let's get this one back in the video group by just clicking and dragging it up into there. You can see on the timeline things have gone back to normal. So pause the video right now, get your photos in a nice the order that they are supposed to be in, and we will pick it up from there when you are done. Okay, I got my videos in order, I'm ready to go. This is my first one, this is my last one, I'm happy with the order. Let's look through and see that there are some things that need to be fixed. Let's start right off the bat. This second photo needs to be rotated. It is facing, it is uh, horizontal, and it needs to be a vertical image. Well, how can we fix that? It's actually really simple. Again, click on the photo, make sure the playhead is over the photo, press Control T, and that brings up our free transform box. And all I'm gonna do is hold down Shift, and see how when I move my cursor outside of the box, it turns into that little bendy double arrow? That means I can rotate the photo now. So while holding down Shift, if I rotate, Photoshop does nice clean rotations, and it allows me to stop right at 90 degrees, which means it's perfectly straight up and down. Let's talk about cropping when we're working on video. We don't ever, ever, ever use the crop tool. That will do damaging and terrible things to our video. So to crop, all we do is we just, while in free transform mode, we just kind of resize our image. So if I wanted to show a little bit more, I'll just make the image a little bit smaller. And I'll kind of line that up. And you'll notice I'm not trying to make the image fit in perfectly. There's nothing down here by her feet that needs to be included in this image. So I'm actually going to leave it a little bit bigger and uh, be happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Let's keep moving through my timeline. This image looks okay. It doesn't really need to be cropped at all. I, there's nothing to lose here on the side. So I'm going to just leave that one as is. Here's another one that needs to be rotated. I'll click on it, press control T, hold down shift, move my cursor outside of the box do a quick spin and then I'm actually going to zoom in on this. I'm going to make it bigger because I want to crop out all of that bottom and top stuff that is wasted. Let's try to get that centered. There you go. If you see that little purple line show up right smack dab in the middle right there, that means you're right in the middle and you're good. You let go and perfect. So I'm not going to make you watch me. I'm going to go through and just resize these. You can see this one right here definitely needs to be much bigger. So no problem. Just control T and bring this bad boy up so that it fills up the whole video frame and there you go so i'm going to tighten up the rest of these and then we will pick up the pace from there okay i've got everything lined up and ready to go and now we are ready to start making our images look a little bit better by doing levels and saturation and you already know how to do this this section of the video will be very short just remember that in order to do levels on a photo you can't just click on it you have to also put the playhead over it we've already talked about that so let's start with this first one Control l is the keyboard shortcut for levels uh, i want you to be uh, feel free to experiment with this go ahead and bring this in a little bit farther in than you might normally do and then play around with this white one uh, you got to be careful with this one don't bring this too far we want our light to still have some glow to it and then play around right with the middle one. You decide on that. Go for what you think looks best. I did want to show you one thing with the saturation. Control U is the keyboard shortcut for that. Do your saturation, but then also don't be afraid to play with your hue a little bit. You can sometimes get some cool effects that you couldn't have got with light painting. Just like that, I was able to turn that to green, and maybe that fits with my story a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and just press OK there. And then just like that, I'll move on to the next image. Again, Control L. Bring that black slider in. Again, feel free to take it a little bit farther than you might normally do. Bring the white one in. Play around with the middle one. Go with what you think looks best for your image. And then, of course, on Control U. If you have people in there with skin, you might not want to play with the saturation too, or the hue too much. But uh, play around with it a little bit. See what uh, works for you. Just go through and do that on all of your images. Just remembering to click on the image and make sure the playhead is over it before you adjust it. 
Uh, pause the video, and then when you're done with your levels and saturation on all of your images, we'll pick it up from there. This is a really good time to talk about the fact that videos make up huge files. You can see this uh, file that we're working on is currently 510 megabytes. That's a large file, and older computers like we're using tend to crash a lot when using large, large files like this. It's a really good idea to very frequently, whenever you're working with video in Photoshop, to every time you do something to all your photos, like I just did levels and saturation on all of them, let's take a second and do a little file save right now to make sure that we're not losing any work. And I'm going to put this back in the light painting folder. I'm going to call this uh, light painting movie. And of course, whenever we're working with multiple layers, which we are definitely here, we want to save as a Photoshop file, a PSD. So go ahead and just hit save there. Again, these are huge files. It's going to take a while to save. You can see this blue bar right here. You can continue working while that is saving, but if you try to close Photoshop, uh, it won't let you. So keep an eye on that while you're working. But let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Next thing we want to do is we want to adjust how long each one of our slides shows up for. Uh, each one loads by default for five seconds. That's a little too long for me. That makes our slideshows a little too long. I want to go in and make each one a little bit shorter. I do want to show you a cool little feature here that might make this a little bit easier. This little triangle right here basically allows you to kind of zoom in on your timeline and zoom out. So it's basically when I move this to the right, we're getting much closer to everything. When I move it to the left, we're getting farther away. Sometimes it's handy to be in this mode. Sometimes it's handy to be really zoomed in, as you're about to see. For the most part, I usually work with my timeline right about there. But I'm going to go in now and adjust the time that each one of these shows up. And that is a little bit easier if I'm a little more zoomed in. So I'm going to put my playhead over the image I want to work on. Zoom in a little bit, not too much. And that's about right right there. Now, keep a close eye on my cursor. Watch as I move it to the edge of the clip. You can see it turned into that weird little bracket thing with a couple of arrows. You notice the bracket is open facing to the left. That means that right now if I click and drag, I'm going to be editing the clip on the left. Image this one right here, IMG0049. Notice though if I move it just to the right, even though the clip on the right isn't selected, notice how my bracket switched. See how it turned to the right? Well that means I'm now editing the clip on the right. So I want to edit this one and make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to put it right there. I'm just going to click and drag it to the left. And I'm keeping a close eye on that duration. I want to be right around four seconds. I don't care if I'm in exactly four seconds. Like four seconds in one frame is fine with me. So I'll stop right there. Then I'm going to come to this next one. And I'm going to click right here. Notice I don't even have to select it or put my playhead over it. I can just click on it and drag it over. And again, I'm watching that number, that duration. Stop right when I get close to four seconds. And I'm just going to keep doing this going through until I have all of my slides to about four seconds. So pause the video, do that to all of your slides, and we'll pick it back up when we're Okay, I've gone in, made all of my clips four seconds. We're now ready to start making this thing look a little bit better, a little bit more like a professional video. And we are going to start by adding some transitions in our slideshow. Right now, our photos just kind of jump from one photo to the next one. It doesn't look really great. We want some nice, smooth transitions here. So let's do that. Let's start with our very first slide. We want a nice, gentle fade in. We want it to fade from black into the name of our story. This is really simple to do. See this little black and gray box right here? I'm going to click on that, and my transitions box pops up. And I'm going to start with a fade with black. I'm going to click on this and drag it right down into there. And that gives me a transition here where it will slowly fade in from black. You can see it's got a little ramp to signify that. And you can actually change the time of this. You can bring this to the right or to the left, however you want. I think the default is pretty good, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm now going to go to the very end of my slideshow. And I want it to fade out with black at the end. So I'm going to click on this and drag that one and put it on the end so that it fades out with black. But what about in between? What are we going to do from photo to photo? Well, sometimes you want it to just jump from one photo to another. But most of the time, you want a more smooth transition. And what we don't want to do is a fade with black, like a fade out and then a fade in. That kind of messes with the flow because it fades out. We don't see anything. And then it fades back in. I'm not crazy about that. I'm going to remove these by clicking on it and then pressing delete. And instead, what we want to use is a crossfade. And you can see that option is right there. I'm going to click and drag that in. 
And you can see it pops, if I put it right in between the two, it puts a black box around the end of this one and the beginning of the next one. And then it does this weird little blend where now what's happening is one image is fading out while another one is fading in. And that's kind of cool. That gives our show a little bit more of a nicer flow. So I'm going to go through and put a crossfade on all of my transitions. So just click and drop one there, click and drop one there. Pause the video when you have done that to all of your photos. We'll pick it back up. All right, I've got my transitions on all my slides. You can see the nice visual representation of them. I do want to show you one thing really quick. When it comes to resizing your clip or changing the amount of time it shows up, once you add a crossfade, it gets a little bit confusing. Let me zoom in on my timeline here and give you an example. So for example, this slide right here, let's say I don't want this one to show up for quite as long. Maybe it's a little bit boring. Maybe I don't need it as much in my story. Or maybe I want it to show up for more time. Maybe it's my favorite image and I want it to spend more time on the screen. Well, the problem with once we add crossfades is there's a lot of places where we can make adjustments. There's one right here, here's one right here, here's one right here, and then here's another one at the end. You want to make sure you get all the way to the far right one and make sure you're up above the crossfade because if I click it right here, I'm actually adjusting the crossfade. You can see that. Whereas what I want to be adjusting is the entire length of the slide. So if I click right there and click and drag, I'm moving how long that particular slide shows up for. So let's say I want this one for a little bit less time. I drag that to about there. And that slide now has a little bit less time than it had before. You can also add time by clicking and dragging it the other way. Uh, but just that's an option that you have. And that's how you do it if you've already added a crossfade to an image. Now we need to solve this problem of, of this black and gray and white checkboxes. That's transparency, which means when we produce this video, when we're done, those are going to show up as white and ick. We don't want that. That's going to look terrible. Even if all of your images are horizontal and you don't have any of this showing up on any of your images, you're still going to want to do this part because it will be important when it comes to the next step that we're going to do after this. Basically what we want to do is we want to put a black box that fills up the whole screen underneath video group one. Well, to do that, we need to make a new video group. So let's do that. It's real simple. We're going to click on this dude right here, the same as our Add Media button, and we're going to choose New Video Group. And you can see that made a Video Group 2. And if we go over and look at our Layers palette, we now have Video Group 1 and Video Group 2. Let's do a couple things that are going to make the rest of this easier. One, let's collapse Video Group 1. We are done with this. We don't need to see all of these anymore. I'm going to collapse that by clicking on this button right here. And away it goes. And then come look at video group one. If all of this is still out for some reason, your position, opacity, style, click on this and that will make that go away. Now, we need video group two to be below video group one. And we can't move those here. We have to do it over here in the layers palette. So I'm just going to click on video group two and drag it underneath video group one. Don't drop it on top of video group one. We don't want it to go inside of there. We want it to go under. And you'll notice over here in my timeline that video group two is now below video group one. Awesome. Now, with video group two still selected in the layers palette, let's add a new layer to it by clicking on the new layer button at the bottom of the layers palette right there. And that's going to make a layer one there. And look over here, I have a layer one. Let's make sure that layer one is selected by clicking on it. Let's make sure the playhead is over layer one by moving it there. And we are going to fill this with black by going to edit, fill, and choosing black as our color. So make, click on contents, change that to black, and press OK. Now, this just filled up the background with black. You can see if I put it right there, I no longer have the transparency behind the photo until I get to there. Then it's back. That problem is super easy to solve. Just click right here, drag that thing over so it fills up the whole timeline. And now I have a nice black background behind my vertical images. Perfect. That's just what I wanted. All right, we are almost done with our video. We're just going to add a couple more features here to make it a little bit more awesome. Let's start. Let's add some closing credits to our video. Um, here at the end of the video, we're going to put the name of everyone in our group. To do that, let's start by clicking and dragging this black bar out a little bit because we need a little bit more time. And let's go ahead and add some text. Before we do that, come up here and click on video group one. That will make life a little bit easier. And then move your playhead to where you want the text to show up. I like a little bit of a pause in between the last slide and the text. So I'm going to put my playhead right there so that there's a little break and then my text will show up. So come over here, grab your text tool, 
Make sure you are typing with white. You won't, don't want to be typing with black on a black background. And the size needs to be around 250. We want great big old text. And I'm just going to click and drag a box right here. And then I would type in here a Mr. Johnson production. Again, you will put the names of everyone in your group. I do want you to have this text centered, so use this centered text button right there. I do also want you to try to get it more or less right in the middle of your uh, movie screen. And then let's take a quick look at the timeline. Look what happened. My text did not show up on video group one. So that's a super, super easy fix. I'm just going to click and drag it down. And it is now on video group one right where I wanted it. I am going to put a fade in it. I'm going to fade with black, a fade in on my text, and a fade out on my text. And then I'm going to move the black bar box underneath so that it lines up right there at the end. And just like that, I've got a fully completed movie. We are going to add a few more things here to make this even more awesome. But for now, we're in a really great spot. So let's make sure we save our work. File save. Pause the video. Get yourself. Make sure you're uh, here right where you want to be. Make sure your transitions all look good. Make sure you did levels and saturation on each one of your photos. Make sure your photos are rotated and in here properly and that the photos show up for the correct amount of time so that it looks as good as you think it should look. Once you've done all of that, we'll pick up the video and we will finish things up. Okay, let's talk about how to add audio to our video. We're going to try to add a clip from a song and we are also going to add some sound effects to this thing. And yes, you need to have both. Let's talk about how to get an MP3 that we can use on here in our music or in our video. We're going to pull up YouTube. And uh, this is a story about an angel or a fairy. So I thought Angel of the Morning by Juice Newton, a fantastic song, would be an appropriate song to use. Go ahead and click on it. And once it loads up, we're not actually going to watch it. In fact, let me pause it. Oh. And what we actually want is the link. So I'm going to just select this and right click and choose copy. And then I'm going to youtube-mp3.org. Now there's always a chance that this is going to be blocked for you guys. So what I actually did was I did a Google search for YouTube MP3 Downloader. And this is the first one I got. This is the one I've used many times. Uh, if it's blocked at the school, let's try some different ones, but I don't believe it will be. So let's click on that. And then what you want to do is just paste your link that you got from right here into right here, and then just click on Convert Video. Okay, wouldn't you know it, that first link, the youtube-mp3.org, did not work. So I went <clears throat> back to my Google search, YouTube in mp3.com, seems to work. So I'm going to click on this one, and I'm just going to paste that same link in right here that I got from YouTube, and I'm going to click on Download MP3. And here it is right here, the big Download MP3 button right there. I'm just going to click on that. And this will pop up. And of course, we will want to save this in our photo drive, period one. Come into your folder. Put it in the light painting folder. And we should probably even make a new folder and call it audio. And let's save that in here. You'll see a little thing that will pop up here on the bottom of the screen. Just wait for that to finish, and then you are good to go. You're also going to want to download a couple of sound effects. You can find a great sound effects website, freesound.org. If you go to the light painting assignment in Canvas, here's a link to it. And then here is the username and password that you'll need to be able to download sound effects. I've already created an account for you. So let's go over to freesound.org and you can just search for the sound effect that you want. Maybe, uh, again, this is a song about or a story about an angel. So let's search for angel and let's see what comes up. So here are some of my options. I'm going to come in here and just click on this little play button. Ooh, that's a very angelic sound. I would like to down this, download this one. Let's go ahead and click on it. And it looks right here, i got to log in to download. I haven't logged in yet on this computer, so I'll do that. Again, the username is srphoto. The password is aperture. I'll go ahead and click on log in. And now I have the option to download it, so let's download that. 
And again, we'll save that in the same folder, period one, Johnson Mr. Light Painting Audio, and go ahead and just click save on that. So I've got both of those downloaded. Let's go, <clears throat> let's go ahead and load those up into our video and put them where we want them to go. Okay, I just realized that the file that I downloaded from uh, Freesound was a .ogg file. Photoshop does not support those files. The kind of files we're looking for are ones that end in .wav or, of course, .mp3. We already know that either of those will work for what we are doing in, the, in this assignment. So make sure you look for one of those, one that ends in the .wav or the .mp3 will work just fine. So I've already downloaded one, so let's go to Photoshop and see how this all works. Let's start by importing the song that we used. I'm gonna go ahead and down here at the bottom of my timeline, you can see I have an audio track. I'm gonna click on this little down arrow right here. And of course, I'll click on Add Audio. And here's my Angel of the Morning song by Juice Newton. I'm gonna go ahead and add this up. This will uh, take a second the first time you load it. I've already loaded it once, so it loaded really quick. You can see it's really long. It's much longer than the rest of my video. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to kind of play around with this. You're gonna have to play your video and listen and find the part of the song that you wanna use. And then you cut out the rest of it. So let's say for example that I wanted to start my song right here in my timeline. Well, I would just come over here to my far left hand side and just drag that to right there and hit stop and you can see that automatically shifted it over at which point I'll now come to the very end of the song which is way out here this would probably be a good time to zoom out on my timeline and grab that edge and let's bring that all the way over here and now my song is only as long as my slideshow is which is perfect <clears throat> All right, I'm now gonna zoom back in on my timeline a little bit and I know what you're thinking. You want your song to fade in and fade out at the beginning and the end. And I agree, that's a great idea. Let's right click on this and we're just gonna fade in. We can set the fade in to be about, oh, let's do about a second and a half. And let's do the fade out to be about three seconds. You could also turn it up if you feel like your song's not loud enough. You could increase the volume or you could lower the volume by shifting this either to the left or the right. I'm gonna leave mine right about at 100%. And there you go, now my song will fade in at one and a half seconds, or it'll take one and a half seconds to fade in, and at the end it'll take two and a half seconds to fade out. Awesome. Now, let's add our sound effect that we want to include. We're gonna do that by just clicking right here and adding an audio track by clicking on the new audio track button. And then, <clears throat> well again, we'll just come here and go to add audio. And again, see this is the OGG file, that won't work, but this wave sound file will, so I'm gonna double click on this one. And it's gonna load up, and you can see it's much shorter, and you can move this around and kind of decide where you want it, and you might decide to kind of cut part of it off. And maybe make it a little bit shorter. And maybe I don't wanna fade in, but I do wanna fade out, so I'm gonna add that. And maybe I want it to be a little bit louder so that I can hear it over the song, so I'll do that. Just press enter. And there you go. So as long as you add at least one sound effect and one part of a song, you are good to go. You do not need to have the song fill up the entire slideshow. If you want your song to kind of fade out right here, that's fine. Maybe you only want your song for a little bit of your slideshow. Uh, that is also fine with me. You could have your song just go from there to there. Honestly, the hardest, most time-consuming part of your song is just gonna be finding the part of the song that you want to use in your video. Okay, we are almost done. The only thing, other thing I want to show you is what to do if you want to add a little secret ending at the end of your video. Okay, so you want to add a little surprise ending to the end of your video. That's a great idea. What you do is you just want to grab our black box bar and let's just drag this out a little bit farther. And then we will just come up here to video group one. We'll click on add media. And let's just find a random photo to put in there for now. So here, I'm just gonna pick on a random old photo and that's gonna pop in there, only I'm gonna move it towards the very end and maybe I'll bring this out even a little bit farther and make it a little bit shorter. And there you go, that's how you put a little surprise photo at the end of your production where people can, if they wait 10 seconds, they get to see this nice little bonus photo. Oh my goodness, we are finally done. Oh, this is the longest video I've ever made. Let's go to file, make sure we do a good job saving up our project. Okay, my project is saved up, but how do we get a video that we can actually turn in? Well, this is uh, the fun part because it takes a long time. We're going to go ahead and go to File, 
and we're going to go to export and we are going to choose render video it's kind of hidden in there it's kind of obscure but that's what we're looking for right there file export render video let's click on that and you are going to see a lot of options on the screen it's kind of confusing i'm going to tell you there's only a couple things you need to worry about one make sure you save your video somewhere where you can find it you can see mine is already set to default to my period one johnson comma mr light painting awesome that is exactly where i want it Two, let's uh, leave this right here on the Adobe Media Encoder. Encoder. The only thing that we need is to find right here under Size. We're going to click on this and we're going to choose HD, HD, or HDV 1080p because we want a nice looking uh, video. Actually, scratch that. I lied. Let's do HDTV 1080p. That's the one that we're going to want to use. Let's take a look right here where it says Preset. I'm going to click on this and choose uh, YouTube 1080p. And actually, uh, let's do that first. Don't even worry about this. That will automatically change this to where you want to be. And you are good to go. Now, I hope you're patient because this is going to take a while. So let's go ahead and just click on Render. And you're going to want to just leave your computer sitting for a while. And uh, I don't know how long this is going to take, but it's going to require some patience. But once that is done, it's going to kick out an MP, or excuse me, a video file that you can upload to YouTube or Flickr, and that is how we are going to turn in this assignment. Congratulations, you made it through my longest video ever, and hopefully this was a fun project for you.